Hello everyone, welcome back to the Zeko Football Channel. Manchester United have the unenviable task of taking on their local rivals Manchester City in the Premier League this weekend. And if we're honest, it's not looking likely that they're going to be getting a result. But if they were, how would they do it? Today, that's what we're discussing. If you are new to the channel, please make sure that you subscribe, you like the video, and you turn on those notifications so you don't miss what's coming up. But now, let's get into it. Manchester United's main problem, if we're honest, is that, well, they have more than one problem. So they need to be well prepared when coming up against a juggernaut like Manchester City, and that means setting up in a different way that you might not normally expect. One of the problems really with Man United is the space between the defence and the attack. This causes numerous amounts of space in between the lines and it creates just such a disharmony between the rest of the team. Casemiro being the holding centre midfielder really pushes up next to Bruno Fernandes and what would be normally Kobe Mainu, and it just creates a massive gap in between these lines. And this is a gap that will be exploited by Manchester City to no end. The utilisation of the ball is non-existent when you can't pass it through the lines. And when Manchester City really get into these areas, they will cause absolute havoc. Blindside runs from the likes of Erling Haaland, passes into the box from Kevin De Bruyne, it goes on and on. But this is mainly going to be helped by the fact that Man United have such a large distance between their midfield and their defence. So there's one thing that they can really stop. But I think they can go a little bit deeper and it goes down to a way that Manchester City are playing and really playing a numbers game. So if we think about the way that Manchester City wants to set up, we move Haaland forward, we know that Man City have two wide players. We know that Kevin De Bruyne will be lurking in this central attacking midfield area, but generally what happens with the City side is he goes to one side and one of the Manchester City midfielders of the double pivot that they start off with moves up into a more central attacking midfield position, one of the two attacking midfielders. Rodri then moves across and it allows a centre-back to come forwards. This creates a back three and it gives Manchester City two holding midfielders essentially in the middle of the park, two attacking midfielders, two wingers and their main striker. But more importantly what it does is it splits up Manchester City's side to allow five defenders and five attackers. This gives them balance through their side but it also gives them attacking impotence and control of the game. With this centre back in this area he's able to pass the ball and keep possession a little bit easier. But what it does in particular is that if you have the Manchester United striker a little bit further forwards, you have an outnumbering in the centre of the park because you have Manchester United's three players up against Manchester City's four and all of a sudden it becomes an absolute mismatch. Now what thing, one thing that a lot of teams tend to do is drop a player inside to create a little bit more of a focal point. They could be pinned onto one of the midfielders to really stop and hinder the process and then you've got a four on four. Let's be completely honest about it, Manchester City's individuals are better than Man United's and one thing that you've really got to do is limit the space in behind between the midfielders and the defenders. This is going to try and limit the likes of Kevin De Bruyne, the likes of Phil Foden and the such, and the sort I should say. But when we have Manchester United setting up, we need to make sure that they're able to be defensively solid. So I've opted for a different tact. I think they should play two holding midfielders. This could be in the form of Amrabat and Casemiro. It could be Kobe Mainu and Casemiro. But two holding midfielders to start with. Then what I want Manchester United to do is change out their striker. We're aware that Rasmus Hoyland is not available at the moment. And to a certain extent, I think that might be a plus point for Man United because it allows them to do this. I want them to play two centre midfielders as their forward line. I want Bruno Fernandes and Scott McTominay are my two real go-to players in this particular instance, here and here. And what this does is it creates a box formation for Man United, but it also allows them to drop a little bit deeper. You can then rotate whichever one player wants to go and press. It gives you the freedom to be able to have a man marking system. You could have the likes of Kobe Mayno onto Kevin De Bruyne. You could have Casemiro onto Kevin De Bruyne. You could have the likes of Bruno Fernandes onto Rodri. 
It just gives Manchester United a little bit more defensive flexibility when defending against Manchester City pushing the ball forwards. But what it also does is it gives them an out to be able to move Marcus Rashford over to this left-hand side. I don't think it does Marcus Rashford any good being in this central area. He can't hold up the ball, he can't really retain possession, and if you try to bounce the ball off him, he's going to lose it, because his passing isn't that good. What he's really good at is isolating space out in wide areas and taking players on. Now, this is more than likely going to be Kyle Walker, but the way Manchester City set up first and foremost is to defend the width of the penalty area, and this is why they have three centre-backs. The two central midfielders, or the two pivots that they have created in this system, are to defend against the transition. But they're defending against the transition in terms of the middle of the park. They tend to leave the wide areas quite isolated. So in this particular scenario, I want Manchester United to really focus on the centre of the park. And then once they get their transitional play going, once they get a turnover of the ball, I want them to start passing down into these wide areas. This can be through Casemiro, it can be through Bruno Fernandes, it just requires a little bit of composure and a little bit of quality. But the first thing that I want to notice, or that I really want to mention, is that Manchester City are first and foremost going to be protecting this area and this zone, because it's the most dangerous zone, and that's why they do it. That's why they flood the centre of the park, to be able to push players out wide, force them into running a longer distance so that the rest of their teammates when they have the transition can come back so we want well we want manchester united to really be attempting to create this transition and you want to isolate jules you want to isolate marcus rashford onto the likes of Carl walker and you want to isolate alejandro garnacho onto the likes of an akanji and ake or the like and it's in these two situations that I think Manchester United are going to get most of their joy from. The next thing that they're going to want to do from a defensive point of view is really squeeze the pitch. Now this is done in a couple of ways. You can either push up high with your centre-backs, which against Erling Haaland is not advisable. So I'd recommend doing it just in front of the penalty area. You need a line that you can stop on. Just in front of or on the penalty area is where I would recommend it. And then you start to hold and squeeze the line. And if you squeeze the line and drop them a little bit deeper, it condenses the pitch. And it means that Manchester United have less space that they need to cover, but it also means that Manchester City have less space to really operate in. In doing this, you are limiting the passing lanes from Manchester City into their centre attacking midfielders, but at the same time, you're also stopping the interplay through the middle of the pitch. And this is where Manchester United will be killed. This, in a nutshell, is where the game will be won or lost for United. A moment of magic can come up, but if they start to allow space in between their lines, in between their banks of four, whether they're, uh, they're banks of uh, midfield or a defence, they will be absolutely destroyed if they allow players of Kevin De Bruyne's quality and his just sheer skill in and around these areas in between Manchester United's lines. So it's crucial that they make sure that the lines are condensed. It's crucial that they maintain this box for better defensive solidity they push up high and really flip when they need to when they need to obtain a kind of press and then once they have their turnover once they have their transitional play it's important that they go and find these wide areas and it's through this that I think Manchester United can really gain some kind of momentum it's going to take a lot it's always going to be difficult but it's a better scenario than they have at the moment because at the moment I can see them being very isolated, I can see Casemiro having far too much to do, I can see there being a large distance between the defence and the midfield, and when they start to go forwards is arguably the most dangerous point, because they're going to be starting to throw bodies forward. When we have Marcus Rashford and Alejandro Garnacho going forwards, you want to see the support from the likes of McTominay, from the likes of Fernandes. McTominay we know can get a few goals, so he could be the main leading forwards. Fernandes can then join in, and then you've got four players going forwards, allowing for a bit more of a defensive orientation when it comes to Man United attacking and then of course they can revert back to their positions. It's through this that I think that Man United can get a result. 
If they don't do this, I can see it being a very, very long day. And of course, you've got to re rely on a little bit of luck. Erling Haaland is one of the best strikers in the world, and Kevin De Bruyne is one of the best goal creators in the world currently. So you're always going to need a little bit of fortune on your side. But do this and attempt this with a little bit of tactical nous, and I think Manchester United just might be able to shock the current Premier League champions. But my question to you is, what do you think the game is going to be like? And how do you see the game playing out? Let me know your score predictions in the comment section below. Thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And I hope to see you in the next one. But until then, my friends, take care.